let's let's see if we have any internet connectivity problems. And my man, I believe I hit the button. Uh, you, you like me? I gotta put my glasses on too, my man. Just to let you know that, by the way. I I kept <laughs> I kept fighting it. I tried to do everything I can. I wear contacts, and the doctor mm-hmm. finally told me, he's like, look, you know, to read, you need to have your glasses you on. Gotta, you and gotta said, put your eyes on. I said, huh? I got contacts. He said, <laughs> he says, nah, that's that's not gonna get it, by the way. <laughs> but um, anyway. I'm gonna do a mic check, mic check. I'm going now just to see if we even made it because sometimes I go live. I don't know if I told you, I did that with George Frazier one time. We recorded the whole thing and guess what I forgot to do? Hit record? The sound. <laughs> oh my God. So when people come on, I always like to do a mic check, mic check to make sure we're live. I see we got Charmaine is on here, thanks a lot. We got Vanessa, what's up Vanessa? She's yeah, on. That's- yeah, Vanessa Klinger is on. V Speak Life is on. I see we got none other than the man himself, Warren Carlisle, is on. Hey, look, um, Delano, do me a favor. Say mic check, mic check. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, one, two, one, two. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's that New York. That's that jam. That's like one mic sounds, mic check, one. My mic sounds right. I like that, man. I like how you roll. If y'all can hear Delano, just say, Delano, we can hear you because we're checking in. Um, if y'all can't hear him, just say we can't hear him. So do me a favor, check in with him and just let him know you can hear him. Um, if you can hear me, look below the video because we're doing all the checks we can just to make sure that people can hear us because there's nothing like not being heard. So let me let me try it again. Let me try it again. Let me do a mic check, mic check. I'm um, going over here. Hey, what's going on, Malika? Thanks a lot for joining. Okay, she's on, by the way. Thanks. All right, uh, Vanessa says we can hear you. Riley says we can hear you. Um, Warren says, I can hear him too. That means you, by the way, by the way. Um, Kalisa is on. Cheryl is on. Sakoni Prince is on. Uh, the, Warren Carlisle, he's really cool, by the way. He, he does all the stuff on Instagram, by the way, building Instagram communities. Um, and him, him and um, um, Roberto are just two amazing individuals. He says, I got you, bro. Good. <laughs> I like how he says that. You, he's so cool. All right. What's up, Empowers? Ray Lynn, thanks for joining Okay, they can hear you. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing kicked off. Let me let me go ahead and get the hit them on the ones, twos, and threes, and we'll get started in five, uh, four, three, two. Look at you. What are, you are you are you doing a countdown over there? One, let's go. <laughs> Please go ahead and give a big standing check ovation check, 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 for check. the one and the only Shay Brown. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up and it knows it must outrun the fastest lion or be killed and eaten. Also, every morning in Africa, a lion wakes up and knows it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it will starve to death. You've heard it before. It doesn't matter whether you're a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better be what? You better be running. That's right. That's right. You better be running. Life is about meaning. And meaning is about service. Isn't that the reason why we're all here? Isn't that what we're all searching for? 2013, the Peak Performance Institute was created. 5,000 clients who we've helped turn their idea into a reality, their reality into a business, their business into a movement, impacting 5.7 million lives around the world. Imagine that! My name is Shea Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Network, the world's largest organization for the well-being of an entrepreneur. And as we always say, our mission at the Happy Entrepreneur Network, our mission is to inspire, empower, and provide resources for the entrepreneur to live a balanced life and execute their vision for the people they were called to serve. And our mantra. You know, I love our belief. Everyone should have a belief statement. Our belief is the results that show up in your life are just as important as the results that show up in your bank account. With that being said, let's get started. 
What's going on, my man Delano? Welcome, 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 everybody, by the way, to the Happy what? Entrepreneur Show. We are so excited to have you here this morning, this evening, this afternoon, whatever time it is for you, wherever you are in the world, I want you to know that the promise of the show, Nova, what's up, Nova? The promise of the show, what's up, to Keisha Williams? She's in Richmond, by the way. The promise of the show, what's up, Stacy Moore? What's up, Demi Moe? What's up, Juliet Jones? What's up, Eric Nicholson? What's up, D. Bolden? The promise of the show is that it will be a good use of your time, and you're going to walk away with one, if not two, if not three ideas you can use immediately to help you not only grow in your business, but, but get, get results in your life. And the topic this evening is a very unusual one, but it's so true. I'm holding the book, Refuse to Live Talented and Broke. Now, I, now, we'll get into that later. This is going to be amazing. How do you unlock your creative earning potential? How do you, Haki, Haki's in the house, how do you actually make it a, a, make it a reality? Tomorrow's in the house, by the way. Her brother, George, was at the PNC, by the way. Thanks for joining. Tell you what, for everyone that's joining, let me do a check with Delano. Delano, where are you um, coming in from today, my man? New York, New York, up, upstate New York. That's where I'm coming from. New down. York, New York. So nice. They named it twice. That's what I'm talking about, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here in Washington, D.C. For those folks that are joining on, do me a favor. I want you to look right below the video. Look right below the video and go ahead and do this right now. I want you to write just one statement. But first, I want you to share button. I'm going to ask Delano if it's OK, if we can pay this message for it, because sometimes, Delano, people don't want me to pay the message for it because they don't they feel like they're giving too much away. So with your permission, what's up, Renee Mickens? Oh, my God, you bring out the all stars, man. Um, is it OK if we pay this message for Delano? Can I share this out to other tribes? Yes, by all means. Yes. Oh, this is cool. Delano says we have his permission to go ahead and share this out. What's <laughs> up, Nay? We can do that. So here's what I want you to do before we share it out. I want to stop for a moment. And I want you to go ahead and write this down. Just, just go ahead and write this down. I refuse to live talented and broke. I want you to have, I want you to write this down. Look right below the video. Look right below the video. And I want you to write these words right here. I refuse to live talented and broke. Now, if you can hear me, what's up, Stacy Moore? Thanks for sharing it. She said, hashtag share it. Thank you so much. What's up, Stephanie Washington? Look right below the video. Look right below the video. We're going to start with an affirmation. Then we're going to get started because we've got a lot of stuff to cover. But I want you to write, I refuse to live talented and broke. I refuse to live talented and broke. What's up, Ella Carroll out there in Kansas City representing this evening? Riley Lamore put, I refuse to live talented and broke. Now, Delano, you can probably see some of the comments. They're right on my page. They're right below. They're writing them right now. Tamara says, I refuse to live talented and and broke. If that's you, and you know that this is your moment, you know that this is your time, if you're ready to unlock your creative potential, do me a favor. Look right below the video, and this is for the entrepreneur right now that is ready to go to another level. This is you encouraging someone else. This is you inspiring. This is you paying the message for. See, at the Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe, we don't believe in just pushing out, pushing out, and talking and talking. No, no. We like to engage we like you to share your comments so as i'm reading below delano i don't know if you can see those comments below do you see them below well, no, no, I, where no where where, where okay. are they go to my personal page and click on the video and you see them playing below but um the comments but i'll go and read them tamar bloom doran put i refuse to live talented and broke so you go to facebook my personal page shay brown just letting you know delano click on the video and you'll see all the comments below the facebook live video um, Nova put, I refuse to live talented and broke. Thanks a lot. What's up, Samuel Sakara? What's up, Tabi Muhammad? Uh, what's up, Tabitha Broho? Sakoni Prince put, I refuse to live talented and broke. Eric put, I refuse to live talented and broke. Vanessa put, I refuse to live talented and broke. Ebony, I refuse to live talented and broke. Malika, Renee, Ebony, V Speak Life says, I refuse to live talented and broke. Tanya, Bling's home, what's up? If that's you, look right below the video and put, I refuse to live talented and broke. And you might have to hold that belief for someone else. You know, one of the things I've learned, Lionel, is that sometimes we need other people to believe in us before we can believe in ourselves. Yeah, can you take a moment and talk about the importance of believing in someone else 
before they can believe in themselves. Because my mom, by the way, when um when my my coach told me that I'd be one of the top five sales trainers of my generation, I didn't believe it. He said, wow. I'm going to hold the belief for you, Shay. I told my mom, I said, Mom, I paid this guy all this money. He said, I can be one of the top five sales trainers. I hate sales. Isn't that dumb? She says, oh, no, <laughs> dear, you're number one. Number one, mother. Uh, I'm, I'm not number one in the world. You're number one in my world. You're number one. And I started believing that, by the way. And so talk about, Delano, if you can, the importance of believing in someone else and holding the belief for them before they get there. Ella Curl, who you've met, is in Kansas, says, I refuse to live talented and broke. Tabitha said, I refuse to live ta talented and broke. Charlene is on here. Um, Demi Mo Burns says, I refuse to live. Huh? She said re she's refusing to live talented and broke. I, now I see the feeds. Oh, no, no. They're there. Uh, uh, yeah. Tamara says she just shared. Hey, thanks a lot for sharing. We appreciate that. She's down in North Carolina, by the way. You have his permission. He said you can share it tonight with your tribe, with your members. You can do that. Constance Carter, no one works harder, was here yesterday. She said, I refuse to live town and broke. Okay, Delano, I got to turn over to you because we got to cover, but talk for a moment. Forget the book right now. We'll get to that and we'll get to how wonderful you are and how you change lives and how you're a creative director. Talk about the importance of folks believing in themselves and believing in others. So I believe in others before they believe in themselves and paying that, paying that message forward. Yeah, you know, what comes to mind is one of my favorite movies, and that is The Matrix. And what was so ironic is that Neo, even though he had a hunch that he was the one, he needed the affirmation and the confirmation from someone else that he respected. It is, it is the most important approval that you would get in your life. Most people who have accomplished anything worth mentioning had someone who said, you did good, but there's something better in you. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's nice, but there's something even stronger. You know what? You're good, but you could even be better. And when you do that, other people would do that for you in your life. There's three relationships that you have to have always, and that is relationship you look across. Oh, hold on, hold on. You, you said there's three relationships, right? So for all my note takers, what's up, Vicky Kirk? Do me a favor. He's going to give the three relationships. Someone put those notes right below. Write the notes below for yourself, but all my digital note takers, write it for the person listening to the podcast that can't take notes right now. Write it for the person that's listening on a conference call right now. Write it for the person that's cooking dinner and they got it in their ear. So Delano, yeah. give them the three types of relationships they need, and someone jot those down right below. Take it away, yeah. Delano. What's up, Monique White? Thanks for joining. We love you. So as an entrepreneur, there's three relationships you must have constantly in your life for balance. The first one is someone you look up to. Okay. That's the mentor. That's someone who speaks into your life. Then you need a colleague, someone on your level that you can interchange ideas. And then the next relationship that you always need is someone that looks up to you. That keeps a tri-cycle of information, approval, affirmation going. And you know, everything is created on three. So when you have those three relationships working in your life, matter of fact, if you look over your failures, your, the things that you, you didn't do, the missteps, I guarantee you, you would see one or two of those relationships intact and not all three. When you have all three intact, I'm telling you, it's something magical, it's something significant, it's something that's godlike when you have those three relationships in you. It's better to give than receive. I love so, that. Not only having, but also giving and sharing. Wow, giving and sharing. Nova put out there, yes, Matrix is an accurate depiction of that statement. She says, thank you so much, by the way. Someone put out there, Madeline Bass. What's up, Madeline Bass? She put hashtag, you can be better. Hashtag, you can be better. What's up, Cynthia Green? Cynthia Green has Couples Fest. You got to talk to the Lionel, man. He's just amazing. You're going to love him. What's up, Erica Sally? She helps people be unbreakable. Oh, my gosh, she's here. Thanks a lot. Look, as you're listening right now, we really appreciate you, Ella. She put three types of relationships you must have. She put that right down below. Thank you so much. Vanessa put the three types of relationships, a mentor, a colleague, and someone that looks up to you. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. We're going to get started. And I like to start with the Champions Creed. And I got so excited because this whole concept, I refuse to be talented and broke. This should be the mantra. 
Like, it should be the mantra. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter what color you are. This should be the mantra. I was talking to Trevor Oz today, and I said, you know what? But I got the book, and I haven't read the whole book. I'm going to read the book. I'm going to Houston, so I'll be reading the book on the plane and all next week. You all wrote below, I, I refuse to live talented and broke. You put that below. But as you do that, Cynthia Sly, Carla, if you haven't done that, do that. I refuse to live talented and broke. That's going to be the mantra. That's the mantra. I want you to put at the end of that, put hashtag, you can be better. Put hashtag, you can be better. Put hashtag, you can be better. What's up, J.W. Fenwick in the house? Yeah, you got none other than the one and only Delanto. I refuse to be talented and broke. What's going on, Chad? You have my son watching. Anytime you get a millennial watching, I'm like, what's up with that, Delano? It must be because of what you've been doing, my man. Um, as we get started, Janice Gross put, I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag, you can do better. Now, Delano, on folks that are watching right now, they're entrepreneurs, as you know, and they're folks who get up every single day. They pay their taxes and they believe that people will pay you today if you help them solve a problem today. They're in the problem solving business. Um, before I do that, Delano, can you see right below? Can we announce people who made comments? Do you see Erica's comment? I refuse. Can you read that? Erica, yes, I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag you can do better. Thank you so much for that. I see Ella Carroll. Hashtag you can do better. Monique White, I refuse to live talented and broke. You can do better. Awesome. This is awesome, guys. Yeah. So as you put it, I, I refuse to live talented and broke. Delano's going to be going back in. Delano will see the feed. He's, he's live. Like he's watching it right now. So we are giving him real time feedback. As we're getting started, I refuse to live talented and broke. Do you see Tanya's comment there? I do. And uh, what's up, Janice Goss? I know her. She's awesome, awesome writer. Oh, amazing. So Tanya yeah. said, I refuse to live talented and broke. Now, you might say, Shay, why are you saying that? Well, he's going to talk about some of the keys to unlocking your creative potential. Yeah, that's really important. But I want you to know something about failing. One of the things I like to start off with, Delano, we're going to get to that right now, is I always like to start off with the Champion's Creed. The Champion's Creed is something that we believe in. What's up, Rita Porter? Thanks for joining. And the Champion's Creed says this. This is something that my mentor taught me, and I paid it for it. And it might be another 10 years, but I might have to move this over. We have to change this creed. I got to go with the brother's book. I refuse to live talented and broke, because I just love that. But let me tell you what I've been reading to myself for the last 15 years. And we're going to read it together, and then we're going to kick off, and we are going to unlock your creative potential, something that Delano A. Johnson does for businesses and also for individuals. He's a bad man, Majama. He's a creative director. He's an author. You can read his bio. But let me show you the Champion's Creed. The Champion's Creed says this. I'm not judged by the number of times I fail, and I failed a number of times, but by the number of times I succeed. And the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail for those that are afraid to jump in, for those that don't know if they should move forward, for those that are like, should I do this or should I not? And you keep trying, and you keep trying, and you keep trying. Delano, can you take a moment? I don't know if you can see that screen, but if you can see that, can you read the Champion's Creed for us? I am not judged by the number of times I fail, but by the number of times I succeed. And the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail and keep trying. Wow, that's powerful. And keep trying, Delano. And, and keep trying. We do the remix version around here. We black folks. And, and keep, keep trying. trying. And, and keep, keep trying. trying. And keep trying because I you refuse. Know, I, I don't to mean to put a spoke in this right here, but I, I, I just thought of something. You, yeah. But you are judged by the times you failed mm -hmm. and didn't learn something. Oh, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, you, then you got to break that thing down, Delano. I didn't know he was going to do this. I, I love this. Talk about that. Talk, say it one more time and then you, kind of break it down. And can you give the folks something that they can walk away with? Please take it away. First of all, failure is a lesson. What we are to do is to go back in the past and convert those pain, all of the pain from the past into valuable principles we can invest into our future. That's when you learn something. So you may not be judged for failing, but you will be judged for how many times you fail and did not learn that lesson. You did not convert the pain into cash flow and contracts. That's what you failed to do, and you will be judged by that. Oh, I love it. Convert the pain into what? 
cash it, flow contracts and cash flow okay so do me a favor look right below the video look right below the video let's, let's put that one nugget there convert the pain into cash flow and contracts everyone jot that down right below janice goss is already ahead of us i love it look right below the video look right below the video and don't worry i'm gonna ask delano he, he's talking at it y'all are probably thinking this guy is a rock star we're gonna ask him if he's ever had any failures i'm gonna ask him that that's his cue i'm gonna ask him that in just a minute has he ever had a failure in business what was it and what was the lesson delano learned that he can teach us you, you, the viewer, you, the entrepreneur, you, the speaker, you, the business owner, you, the person that's watching right now, the backbone of these United States and all over the world, you look right below the video and you put this down. Convert the pain from the past into valuable principles that we can invest in our future. I talked about converting your pain into cash flow and contracts. Converting your pain into cash flow and hey. contracts. Delano. They think maybe you haven't had any failures. I can see Monica Johnson's out there. Malika's out there. Riley is taking really good notes. Do you share a time? And, and don't worry, everyone. We got the, we're going to get to this. Don't worry about that. I'm going to ask him some of the principles. We'll talk about his relationship with Miles Monroe, his mentor. We're going to get into that. But, but first, he can't just leave us hanging out there. So I got to know, you talk convert the pain into cash flow and contracts. Now back that thing up and tell us about maybe a time, if you don't mind, you don't have to, a oh, time when you had a failure, what was the lesson you learned and what can you share with the happy entrepreneur tribe? I, I have no problem talking about any major pain positions in my life, any major pain experiences because uh, it is by the word of our testimony that we overcome. Christ did most of the work and all we have to do is to tell our story. So here's my story. Matter of fact, take this down. The most powerful and important message and principle to your purpose is the story that you are embarrassed to tell or afraid to tell. Mm. When you overcome the fear to tell it, that will be, you will be surprised at the, at the people that come out of the woodwork because you said what they were thinking and what they were going through. And if you're going to do anything in life, you got to connect with people. So for me, one of those positions in my life is when I embarked on a project, which was, uh, I was eight years old. I went to Disney World and I came back and my mother said, what did, my mother always made me write an essay for every single thing. If I wanted to go <laughs> down the street and play, I had to write an essay and then perform it. I had to tell her and speak. So she was probably preparing me for this moment right now. But I went to Disney World. I came back. She said, what did you see? What did you learn? And I said, I didn't see characters that spoke like me. I'm a Bahamian. I don't hear no one with no Bahamian accent. <laughs> and she said, well, when you grow up, create it. And that's exactly what I did. I created an animation series, the first one in the Bahamas to do it. Um, the, the, everybody was excited about it. I raised a lot of money for it. I dropped almost uh, half a million dollars of my own money into it. And long story short, it was a national failure because we couldn't keep the demand. Mm. We, we over projected um, promises that didn't come in. And there's nothing worse than building on a promise instead of a cashed check, Ooh. right? Yes. You, you build on what someone say they going to do or what people say they would love to do. And you go ahead, put the infrastructure, but now have nothing to put on that. So for me, it was a national failure not be able to to follow up with our first DVD. First of all, that was a big undertaking because I had a whole animation staff. Mm -hmm. So what I learned from that was, number one, you don't move on projections. You move on what's cashed. You move on what's tangible. You can plan on the things you can't see, but you move on the things that you could see. You don't have to see the whole picture. You just need about 10 to 20% for that, of that thing to show up, of that vision to, to be visible to you 
to give you the green light to start. So I'm not just saying, you know, convert your pain into cash flow and contracts because it sounds good. I'm saying that's what I did. That's what I did. So after I failed, you know, I had three houses, two of them were on the water. I lost my cars, lost everything. I mean, I know what it is to run from the repo man. I know what it is to park my car five <laughs> blocks down from the repo guy because I know I know what time they come in. <laughs> yeah, I know that. I know that feeling. Uh, uh, I know what it is to be every time, you know, you, 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 you turn it on the water just to, just to make sure the water stay on. Or you tell everybody, listen, you all take your showers now. <laughs> the water hot. So I know what it is to do that. And, and, but, but failing so deep got me to the place where I was so depressed, Shay, that I actually read over 300 books to figure out how in the world that I could be so talented, mm -hmm. but yet so miserably broke. So I'm talking about what I know. You know, when, when you talk about what you know, for those folks that are out there and you're watching right now, and you're listening. Um, one of the things that I like to do is, you know, you can hear Delano. Um, you can see Delano. You can feel Delano. But Delano can't see you. He really can't. He can see you in the feed. He can hear your feedback. And for those that are taking notes, like Malika and like Tanya, and like Tabitha and Deanna and Crystal Cunningham, who's in the house, and Erica Sally, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And all of you, Madeline Bass says your book is awesome. Rhonda Williams is in the house. For all of you in the house right now, we appreciate all the note takers that are taking the comments because you're paying this message forward. Yeah, these videos go viral. I get it. Yeah, your comments go with the videos, but you're also a digital note taker and a provider and a giver for someone else. So we do say thank you. But Delano would like to know about you. He'll talk about his business. Yes, he's going to talk about how he got to where he is now, but he don't know what you do. So here's what I like for you to do. I'm going to take a moment, a moment. I always like to recognize our entrepreneurs. Sure. I like to sure. recognize people who serve. I like to recognize people who take their talents and their gifts and they have a vision for the people they were called to serve. That vision yeah. came from God, right? So God gave you this vision. It didn't come from you, just like Noah. Noah didn't make the vision up, but he gave you a vision that's going through you for someone else and you're doing it. So what I like for you to do is I like for you to look below the video right now. This is an opportunity and Delano, it's okay. I want them to spotlight what they do. You look below the video right now and Delano, see what you do. And I want you to tell them not how many letters you got behind your name, um, not who your marquee clients are. We don't really care about that tonight. I want you to put down, I help people dot, 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 or I help businesses dot, dot, dot. So if you're in business, let's say someone, you might say, I help businesses improve their social media, or I help people be able to speak and write their story. After you do that, Put the website down below. Put your website. I, I mean, look, I know y'all saying, Shay, it's free advertisement. It's not about that. I want happy entrepreneurs to connect with other happy entrepreneurs. And I want yeah. people to do business with people they like. And someone has the goal of finding you. So you look right below the video. And I want you to write these words. I help people dot, dot, dot. Hey, Anisha, thanks for joining. Love what you're doing. Or put I help businesses dot 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 we want to understand the problem that you are helping to solve in the marketplace after you do that you're welcome to put down you're welcome to put down your website or your facebook page or you're welcome to put down a way that folks can connect with you so what do you do again shay what's the instructions with this what's the instructions look below the video and write i help people transform their lives or, i help businesses make more sales and as you're doing that, I'm going to ask Delano in a minute just to look below the video. And we're going, to, we're going to acknowledge some of you that are out there and what you do. Now, Delano's giving me permission to forward this video out. So while people are writing that, you hit the heart button. You hit the like button. I want you to acknowledge all the other entrepreneurs that are out there that they're not trying to make more money. That's not why Delano's here today. They want to have more meaning in the world. And he's going to talk about that. They're not interested in just trying to put more income in their pocket. They want more impact in the world and there's some yeah. folks that are out there gonna be writing those comments they're really just looking to make a dollar and a difference delano is they're putting what they do and how they help people one of the quotes that you had in here we're going to read what you put in a moment you put in the back of the book and i love it it says being broke being broke now i want y'all to put what y'all do I'm, I'm gonna come back to you i haven't forgot you you put being broke is not just a statement of financial lack it is an indictment on our failure to convert our daily share of awesome opportunities 
into profitable businesses and meaningful relationships that last. I'm going to say that again while y'all are writing what y'all do. Delano yeah. said, being say broke is not again. a... Say that one more again, Shay. Huh? Say that one more again. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it one more again. And you guys put, I help people and I help businesses. And I'm going to have Delano read some of them below. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to recognize your business. And he's going to talk about this. Don't worry about that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a video before he reads that. But he says, being broke is not just a statement of financial lack. It is an indictment on our future, on our failure to convert our daily share of awesome opportunities into profitable businesses and meaningful relationships that last. Delano, will you take a moment and break that down? I love that. Being broke is not a financial statement. Uh, I mean, a financial lack, a statement of financial lack. I love how you said that. As you get ready to prepare to make that statement, Vanessa Klinger, I don't know if you saw what she does. You see what she does? I help people remove those spiritual blockages which are keeping them from manifesting those things they want to do, be, and have. Do you see that there? Wow, that's awesome. Malika, that's do, you, awesome. Do, do, you see, do you see what Malika put there? Do you see hers? Uh, yeah, I see Crystal Cunningham. Okay, read, read, read Crystal Cunningham's. I help people transform their lives. All right, now, Crystal, tell us a little more about that. That's, that's, that's Bob. Yeah, that's, tell us about that. Can you read Janice Goss? Oh, I help people create content that will tell their story uh, and or generate for their business. Okay, okay, that's good. Read Erica Siles. Now, we're recognizing you, the entrepreneur, you the, but don't worry, Delano's going to teach. We're going to get to that. But he's, he's okay with learning what you do. He want to know who you are. He works with businesses. He's a creative director. All right, uh, read Erica Sallies. Do you see it? Oh, yeah. Well, she, she put a website up, uh, Trust Energy or Trust Energy. Yeah, she put personal professional development coach. I help individuals and companies break barriers to achieve success and reach their goals. Do you see okay. Monique White's? I'll read that one. I help women control their circumstances rather than their circumstances to control them by overcoming life events to transform their, it's moving so fast, transform yeah, their right. frustrations <laughs> to mo motivations. Uh, read anyone you want to read right now. They're coming yeah. in so fast. Uh, yeah, it is. Rashetta Porter, I help people to feel great. I love that, Rashetta. Mm -hmm. Look fabulous at being their best self through the power of touch. Wow, and the website is Divine Spa. Okay. I, hope I said that right. And we, we got a Madeline R. Base. I help people see past their ideas and encourage them to move towards their vision. Amen. Oh, that, that's good. Awesome. Yeah, she loves your book, by the way. She loves your book. Awesome, Madeline. Uh, how, how about Stephanie Washington? I help people launch their business. Uh, well, yeah, I help people launch their business. And she has a, a website mentioned there. Awesome, Stephanie. We love you. We love you. We love you. Oh, man. So many out there. Stephanie Washington out there. Madeline's out there. Tiny said, I help individuals become their own boss. Thanks a lot for putting that. Albert Walkins is in the house. What's up, Don R. Scott? Chantel, Chantel, tell us what you do. But I help businesses blank. Um, here's what I like to do. I want to talk about the book first. Let me just let me just do just a little piece. I want to share it with you because he he did a little piece on uh, refuse to live talented and broke. That's our mantra this evening. I refuse to live talented and talented broke. And broke. If you haven't written that down yet, I want you to look right below the video. Hit the share button first because he's going to talk about it. Hit the share button. I got yeah. the book here. We're going to talk about that. But I want you to write down. I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag I am enough. I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag I am enough. Look right below the video. Look right below the video and put I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag I am enough. Let me let me go and see what Delano was talking about a little earlier today. Let me hit this right here. One moment. We'll be right back. This is coming up. I live in a city where there are more creative people per square mile than any other place on the planet. The question is, how many of them are successful? How many are just like I was, talented and broke? Being broke is more than just not having money. It's failure to turn opportunities into profitable businesses and relationships that last. <laughs> My mother always said, people perish for lack of knowledge. A compass takes you in the direction of your destiny, but knowledge of obstacles and distractions will ensure you arrive safely. My mentor once said to me, if I had half your talent, 
I'd have four times my wealth. Since then, I made a promise to God. If he would help me unlock my earning potential, I would pay it forward and help others do the same. That's why I wrote this book. Because God made us too talented to live our lives broke. And that includes you. You know, Delano, you talked about God made us too talented to live broke. Someone do me a favor. I see out there you're writing down, I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag I am enough. I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag I'm enough. I'm going to ask Delano to talk about that video. He made some powerful statements in there. I'm going to ask him to talk about that right now. But you look right below the video and put down, God made me too talented to live broke. You put that down right now. You look right below the video. What's up, Teresa Ray Old Brown in the house? I want you to look right below the video and put that down right now. God, if you believe in God, some of you are not Christians. That's okay. But if you believe in God and you believe in his son and you are a believer, you don't have to be. Write this down right now. God made me too talented to live broke. Just put that down. God made me too talented to live broke. We're talking about I refuse to live talented and broke. Delano, talk about the, the making of that video and then talk about a few of the powerful statements in there. I like God made me too talented to be broke. I like how you started off, which was there are more creative people within a one mile within one mile of each other than anywhere in the world, yet you decided to start your business. Talk about some of the powerful statements you made in there right now. Crystal Cunningham says that was very powerful. Uh, Stephanie Washington said, I can't wait to get the book. Uh, Erica Sally said, God made me too talented. You got Renee Mickens in the house. Renee, whenever you get Renee Mickens taking notes, whenever you get Renee Mickens taking notes, whenever you get Renee Mickens taking notes, it's like it's like you got the rock star. He's going to talk about that. Don't don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. The book is really there. It is a talented and broke. I'm showing it now. Don't worry. We're going to get into this. We're going to get into some things he's, he's done and some things he's talking about. But I want you right now just to listen to his 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 reasoning behind really creating this book that he has out there. Refuse to be talented. I mean, refuse to live talented and broke. Delano, talk about that if we will. You got Mika Walken. She's from Canada, by the way. Thanks for joining, by the way. We got Thanks, folks in Mika. Germany on here as well. Uh, Mika, look below the video. Tell folks what you do, man. Glad you're here. Take it away, um, Delano. Talk about that video and, 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 and why this, how that inspired you to do this book. Yeah, you know, I was in the city one day and and realized how many talent talented people. I mean, rap was born in New York. Um, there are so many talented people within a square mile than any other place on the planet. It's really just a hub of creativity. It's just not theater, but it's but it's all around. And so. Um, I was walking through, and there was actually a guy, I think he made a clip in in that uh, commercial, who was just on the on a corner, I think it was maybe 42nd, and he was just sitting there with his dog, and he was, I mean, the most beautiful art I've ever seen. And I just walked up to him, and I'm, I asked him, you know, how did he get here, and what is he doing, and he told me his whole story, and and I just said, Wow. I mean, most of us are but probably one contract away or one contract that failed to being as depressed as he was and, and not having a support system. His mother had died. Um, his brothers and sisters, they don't they don't get along. So he said basically it was just him and his dog. Mm. And and it really it really touched me that, you know, I hear I had this book. And, and truthfully, I didn't even start out writing this as a book. I experienced that down period where I lost everything. Um, and, you know, I mean, lost my house, my car, my, my family, you know, um, got divorced. And it just everything within a short span. And so as I, as I walked down the streets of New York, Broadway, I just saw all these people. And I couldn't help to ask, like, who are they? Not just by what they're doing, but really, who are they from a potential standpoint? And so one of the things, or one of the quotes that I said in that is that a compass can take you in the direction of your purpose, but the knowledge of obstacles will ensure you arrive safely. Sometimes 
we get cons consumed with the passion of where we're going, but never stop to figure out that it's probably safer to have a guide who's been on that terrain before. That's a mentor. We talked about that earlier. Um, and so my promise to God in walking through the streets of New York, and we just wanted to, we just wanted it to be as organic as possible. Um, just just an evening where I'm I'm taking a stroll down Broadway and and seeing all these different people, all this talent. When I wasn't seeing people, I was seeing I was seeing businesses and I was seeing ideas and and I was seeing airplanes and I was seeing you know houses. I was seeing all these things, everything that's trapped inside of these individuals who probably settled for something less. And so I just said, God, you know, if if this is your work, this is going to touch people's lives. I made a promise that if you help me get out of this jam of being talented and broke, I'll do everything that I can to help every single person that I meet to experience talented and successful. Wow. You know, that's 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 super powerful. Um, you know, I like that. I refuse to live talented and broke. I like your inspiration. I like where it comes from. Uh, take a take a moment if if you can and kind of step back because not only did you get inspired, not only did you get were you motivated, but you also found your way to having, I believe, one of the greatest thinkers, at least of my generation on the planet. He's no longer with us, but none other than uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, who wrote yeah. the Ford yeah. for the book. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing the book here, Ford, by Dr. Miles Monroe. Yeah. Um, you, you know, can you take a moment? And just kind of talk about one how that relationship started, and I know we could do a whole show on what you learned from him. But can you yeah. give us the one, two, three lessons that you learned from Dr. Miles Moreau? Now, there's a lot in this book, and we're, we're going to get to that. But you know, one of the things I want you to hear, um, as you hear Doctor, as you hear uh, Delano speaking, is that yeah, one of our missions at the Happy Entrepreneur Network is that you get results in your life and results in your business. Yeah. And I'm, I'm asking Delano to focus a little bit right now on just results in your life. He'll get to results in your business because not only is he a marketing genius, not only is he a creative director, not only does he work with companies, and you'll see it in the bio that we put out there, but more importantly, he helps small businesses just like you, just like me, do well as well. And this is very, very important because some of you might be thinking, oh my gosh, he's working with Walmart, he's working with these big brands, and they are super huge brands. But, but he's brought some golden nuggets that's going to help you as well. But one thing I know is that one of our, our core missions is we are the world's largest organization for the well-being of an entrepreneur. So I've asked yeah. him to talk about you and me as an entrepreneur. So as he's doing that, something I want to do, for those folks that are listening right now, like, Shay, I like to get the replay. Shay, I want to get the notes. Shay, I want to get the secret gift. I just want to stay in that conversation. Look right below the video, and you're going to just text the word revenue. Now, it doesn't cost you anything. There's no money needed here. Like Delano, he's here tonight. Delano didn't ask me for a cash app before we got started. He didn't ask me for no Zelly before we got started. He I didn't, didn't pass him a credit card. He said, I showed up to serve. So here's what you can do. You're going to text the word revenue. Like Everyone take out their phone right now. It's going to be a bonus gift. Tonight is bonus time, and this is just my gift to you because I'm feeling that many of you do not want to live talented and broke you refuse to live talented and broke so text the word revenue so get your phone out right now get your phone out right now and go open up the messenger and type in 202-999-3515 it's right below the video you see it right below the video text the word revenue if you've done it before do it again because this gift is only for this evening you got to be watching the video if you listen to the podcast or the replay or the syndication it is on the honor system that means you must do it now you must do it now you must do it when now when's the best time to do it shay i just told you now text the word revenue to 202-999-3515 and just follow the instructions text the word revenue to 202 202- 999-3515. Again, the number is 202-999-3515. You're here this evening. When you text the word revenue, you'll get the notes, you'll get the business toolbox, and a special bonus gift. Now, you are here this evening, again, this morning, this afternoon, with Delano A. Johnson. He's the author. He's the creative director of Refuse to Live Talented 
and broke. And you're here on the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue focused late night show in the country. Don't worry. He's going to come back to Dr. Miles Monroe. Don't worry. He has not forgotten. He is right there. Don't worry. Don't worry. And don't call me. You've got to text the number, by the way. Text REVENUE. Don't call me. Text REVENUE to 202 202- 999-3515. I promise you don't want to miss it. I promise you don't want to miss that. I I'm, I'm promise you, you want to do that. All right, Delano, talk about how you, how you built the relationship with Dr. Miles Moreau. And then y'all listen very carefully. I'm going to ask you to take notes for, um, um, for um, Tanya that's out there, for Janice that's out there, for Loretta that's out there, for Tabitha that's out there. Monique White, thanks a lot. Crystal Cunningham, thanks so much. For those folks, Madeline and Renee, Cheryl, Diane, uh, Malika Courtney, all of you who are taking notes right now, Mika, I want you to take the notes as he's talking because someone wants to know what are the three lessons he learned from none other than the Dr. Miles Monroe. And when you think about it, how many ideas do you need to change your life? Mm. One, one. Someone write this down. One what? good yeah. idea implemented is better than a thousand ideas you know right now. You only need one idea, just one mm-hmm. idea. I asked him to give three. I could have said, can you give me the best idea you've ever learned? No, I didn't say that. I said, hey, man. He said, yeah, I'm coming to serve, Shawty. I'm coming to give, okay? I'm coming to serve the happy entrepreneur community. And so him serving, I said, give us three. So Delano, I'm coming back over to you. Can mm-hmm. you give us three? First, how did you forge a relationship with Dr. Miles Monroe? Because we're curious. And then secondly, secondly, Share the three valuable lessons you learned from Dr. Miles Monroe that we can apply maybe in our life, that we can apply maybe in our business. Take it Mm. away, Delano. Yeah. So here's the first first lesson, and it's actually a combination of experience and an old Chinese proverb, and it is this. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. Mm. When the student is ready, the teacher shows up. I know we have a lot of coaching and particularly mentoring programs. One of the things I learned from Dr. Munro is that mentoring benefits the mentor most. Oh, that's interesting. Because whenever a successful, I call him a successful, or we, let's just call him a talented and wealthy individual, mm-hmm. whenever they come to grips with their mortality, with their season coming to a close, they search for someone who is worthy of the information they have learned over the last 60, 40, 20, 30 years in their life to give, not pay 159 every month, right? Not pay $2 million to come and sit down at my house and let me talk to you. But it is understanding the legacy that this is your opportunity to literally live forever in the principles that's forged your life for what your life means today. You're able to pass that to a worthy soul. Now, Dr. Monroe has mentored many, many, every time I travel, there are people who, who told me that, you know, I was sitting with your dad and he's my mentor and he forwarded my book. I'm, listen, you cannot go anywhere around the world. It's just amazing how he was able to cover so much ground in 60 years. So the first thing I learned with him is that your legacy is tied up in your ability to let go and give. So there's someone out there during that time who is ready because they prepared themselves. It's not all about them. It's really about how do I make a change and how do I further my legacy? So so for me, I met Dr. Monroe at 18 years old. I joined the church, I became a part of a a group that started there, it was a Christian rap group. It was called System 3. Mm And uh, we, 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 were, we were some bad boys, man. We did, we did reggae slash hip hop R&B. And it was awesome. We took it all the way to being nominated for a Grammy Award. Congratulations. So it, was, it, it, was, it was awesome. It was an awesome experience. But how we actually got there was because Dr. Monroe 
I remember this time he called me and he said, you remind me of me when I was in my music group. And he had a music band. A lot of people don't know he's an accomplished musician as well. Mm. And he said, you remind me of me. And he said, I want you to watch me closely. I want you to watch me closely. And that was the first time he really spoke into my life. And I, I knew that, that his life was a template of what I should follow and what I should mimic. So he said, you know, watch me closely. And before taking his praise team, which we had an awesome praise team on the road, he actually took three 18-year-old guys, 18 and 19-year-old guys on the road with him as a minister. I mean, we've been everywhere. We perform at the shrine because of him. We've been on TBN because of Dr. Miles Monroe. And it was because he felt the need to give in to some guys who remind him of what he did. And he wanted to be there for them like no one was for him. i never forget this. He said to me, Delano, I work hard. And this was three days before he passed. He said, I work hard so that you don't have to work hard, so that my children don't have to work hard. All of the people that I've touched, I work hard so they don't have to work hard. So the next lesson I want you to have is, is think about your legacy, number one. Number two, don't be selfish with your success. Right. So, so just, just so we get clear, number one was think about your legacy. Everyone look right below the video. Look right below the video and put... Number one for Miles Moreau, lesson that he learned was think about your legacy. Now, he just shared why, but I want you to take that note. I don't want that to get missed. So someone do me a favor right now. What's up, John C. Butler? What's up, Cazette White out there in California? Hey, Mia, Lynette, thanks for joining. Look right below the video and write that down. This is, I'm asking the three lessons he learned from Miles Moreau, Dr. Miles Moreau, who wrote his foreword in the book, I Refuse to live talented and broke. I refuse to live talented and broke. Johnson says, what's up, fellas? She joined me you at PNC, by the way. Delano, just to let you know that she's out there watching. Hey. Okay, so give us the second one. Give us the second one. I see Tanya put down, think about your legacy. Stephanie Washington put, think about your legacy. Yep. Ellen Carroll, who's always ahead of the game, she put, think about your legacy. Don't be selfish with your success. We haven't got to that one yet, but go ahead, Thanks. Ellen oh. Carroll. She's always ahead of the game, by the way. Uh, Monica White said, when student is ready, the teacher appears. Think about your legacy. Don't be selfish. Hey, thanks a lot. You can add your own notes on there. So thank you so much. We appreciate that. Destiny Robbins, she's in California, by the way. Um, she has two kids. She's an entrepreneur. She regularly tunes in, and she follows people just like you, by the way. I talked to her Destiny. yesterday. She said she, she couldn't wait till you were going to be here. She couldn't believe you are going to be on the show. I said, I got him. I got him. She said, number one, think about your legacy. D. D. Bolden said, think about your legacy. Tabitha Bro Brewhouse said, think about your legacy. Monica Nettles Johnson said, think about your legacy. And then the footnote, don't be selfish with your success. Oh, I love it. Okay, go on to number two, Delano. Go on to number two. So, so, so I want you to think about this. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gates Foundation championed, championed a, a pledge. It's widely known as the Giving Pledge. Mm -hmm. And what is this Giving Pledge? This Giving Pledge is a pledge for billionaires who pledge to give away a considerable amount of their wealth or almost all of their wealth to charity before they die. Mm -hmm. Now think about that. You work late hours, you up all night. Matter of fact, I heard a survey that says that broke, talented and broke people stay up all night. Right? <laughs> and talented and successful people won't go to bed Ooh. and stay up all night. So the talented and broke people, they go and they watch television. The talented and successful people, they can't go to sleep. They won't go to sleep because they get on the phone and call people to strategize on how to take over industries. I love it. Big I difference. Love it. Mm -hmm. So you can't be selfish because you can't take it with you. You can't take what you have with you. And if Bill Gates and if George Lucas, if Warren Buffett have signed this document saying that we're going to give it away. First of all, there was a study done in Harvard that says that 
there is a price for happiness. And they calculated that the price to be happy, fulfilled, is around $75,000 a year. A yearly salary of $75,000. Anything over that, you get diminishing return on every single dollar you try to, you try to buy to be successful or to feel good about yourself. Hmm. Very important. Yeah. So here's, when, when, when he said, don't be selfish, you have to remember that most of what you have is not for you. Decide what's, decide what's important for you to have for you and your family. Uh, matter of fact, let me put it to you like this. Because this is what I did after he said that. I went and I created a chart in a spreadsheet. This was way back in Apple 2C days. I create, created a spreadsheet and I wrote down all the things I wanted, where I want my kids to go to school. And listen, I was only 18, about 18 years old. Where I want my kids to go to school, what kind of car I want. And I added it all up. Mm -hmm. It came to about $2 million or so. Ooh. And I said, God, this is what I want. And he said, good, I'm going to give you that. Then he asked me a question. What if I give you $100 million? What is it for? So here's what it is. $2 million is mine and the rest belong to God. Mm. What's the charitable do, do, what's the charitable organization that you've created? We have the Joseph Foundation, which uh, my family and my kids, we, all of what we put into uh, the, to creating wealth and creating resources is going to be funneled through uh, scholarships to give to kids in, 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 in um, disenfranchised kids who don't have the tools they need to to perfect their gifts and talents and to become, you know, to self-actualization. We want to help get them to the right schools, get them to the right events, get them to the right exposure so that they can become all that they can be. So what is the legacy that you are leaving? You can't be selfish with it. After you buy a house and you walk on through, matter of fact, there's only three rooms that we're in most of the time, the bedroom, the kitchen, and the garage. <laughs> True. You got a 10,000 square foot house, and those are the three rooms that you frequent. So we have to really take a deep dive and a deep look as to why we want this success. Don't be selfish with it, because in the end, most of it is for somebody else. Why not just be proactive and give it away before you die? And when I say give it away, I don't mean just frivolously. I'm talking about planting seeds into where you want to see change happen in the world. So when that change happens, in legacy, it would be said that you contributed to this change. Wow, I love it. Number two was don't be selfish. Someone hit the don't be selfish right now. He's giving you the three golden nuggets, the three lessons that he learned from Dr. Miles Monroe, who wrote the forward for the book. He wrote the forward for the book, Talented. I mean, I refuse to live talented and broke. I refuse to live talented and broke. We'll talk about how you can get it. Yes, it's a real book. We'll talk about where it is. Yes, you can get it. You can see it right there kind of floating in the background. I refuse to live talented and broke. Look right below the video. Thank you, Lester Wright Group, for putting Don't Be Selfish. Thank you, Daniel Smith, for putting Amen to planting seeds for where you want to change. You want the change to happen. Thank you so much, Madeline, for putting Be a Blessing. Destiny put most of what you have is not for you. It is for you to pay it forward, for you to pay it forward. So here's how I want you to pay it forward. We believe in the giver's economy at the Happy Entrepreneur's Tribe. Some of you are already joining the Happy Entrepreneur's Tribe. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Don't be selfish. Pay it forward. The giver's economy says the person out gives their competition, out earns their competition. The person out gives their competition, out what? Out earns their competition. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to hit the share button. Hit the share button. Hit, hit the share button right now. And when you hit that share button, I want you to write those words. Don't be selfish. Give it away. Don't be selfish. Give it away. Now, some of you are going to hit the share button. You're going to hit the share button. And we appreciate that. Some of you hit the share button twice. Some of you shared it to your, your Facebook page. Some of you shared it to your Twitter page. Some of you shared it to your YouTube page. Look, we appreciate every single one of you. Don't worry. Delano's going to get into how to how to unlock your earning potential. He's going to answer that question. But first, there's no way you can have a guy like him on the show who was personally mentored by Dr. Miles Monroe and not ask him what he learned from the feet of his mentor 
and I only asked for three. He could probably he could probably spend all night. We're not going to do that. I only yeah. asked for three. He's given two already. Yeah, th- till two a.m. in the morning. The third one is coming up. We'll be here for two days. The third one is coming up. Now, for some of you out there, you're like, you know what? You know what? You know what? Uh, like Malika Courtney put Shay. I completely forgot that I've got to make sure I include my legacy work. It's okay. Monica Wright said, don't be selfish. Thank you so much. Cheryl Diane. Cheryl Diane is always out there. And we love you so much, Cheryl. She put plant seeds. That's a good one. I got to plant the seeds. The seeds will grow. Look, I'm going to go to him now, and he's going to give us number three. He already gave us number one. Do you remember what number one was? Go ahead and write it down. Do you remember what number two was? Go ahead and write it down. So someone put down number one. Blank. Number two, blank. And you put that right down below, and then we have number three. Now, for some of you, some of you have already texted in the word revenue because you want to get the replay, you want to get the business toolbox, and you also want to get the special gift. No cost to you. If you haven't texted the word revenue, if you haven't texted the word revenue tonight, text the word revenue, get the special gift, text the word revenue to 202 999 3515. Don't be selfish. Be like Mario Reynolds. Don't be selfish, what he said down there. Text the word revenue right now to 202-999-3515. Again, text the word revenue to 202-999-3515. You talk about not being selfish. You talk about creative thoughts. I'm, I'm going to share something he talked about, which, which is about living like children. And then he's going to give us number three. He's going to give us, look, if you haven't had a chance to be mentored, if you haven't been to his website, I'm going to get to his website. We're going to get to it. It's out there. But first, here we talked about living like children what's up elaine kibler thanks for joining it's always a pleasure let's go to that right now may the blessing of today create victories for tomorrow and should tomorrow never come may the things we do today inspire creativity in someone else's life beyond ours Hi, I'm Delano A. Johnson, author of the book Refuse to Live Talented and Broke, 10 Keys to Unlocking Your Creative Earning Potential. I got a creative thought for you. The imagination of a child soars into outer space and knows no boundary of exploration. For it is only the fear of a parent that draws the horizon and restricts his every dream. You know, there's something wonderful and magical about being a child. You know, when my kids were smaller, I would put them on my knee and my lap and I would bounce them up. Then I would do something else. I would throw them up in the air and their little arms and feet would be dangling and we would be laughing. And they would come down and there would be no care of life at all. They wasn't worried about if dad was going to catch them. They wasn't worried about the price of gas at the pump. They weren't worried about their next meal. You know, when we grow older, we stop living when we start becoming children. In order for us to attain any type of meaningful success, any type of sustainable success, we are going to have to be children again. Remember this, the only time that God gives us the license to be children again is when we're imagining, when we're creating, and when we're having faith. You do that, and I guarantee you success will be around the corner. Hey, and with that, as always, I'm Delano A. Johnson. Embrace your creativity. You talk about embrace creativity. Don't worry about it, everyone. We're going to come back to it. He's going to talk about Miles Monroe, but I wanted to pause for a moment and just talk about this embrace creativity and, and how he came up with this idea. Now, he's a creative person. He worked with businesses. He helped market them. He helps brand them. What you're seeing is what he did. This is something he did. This is something that's already out there. I'm just sharing it with you right now. And he came up with creative thoughts. So I'm going to ask him. He said embrace creativity. And sometimes I know I'm, I'm guilty, King Marcus. Thanks for joining, by the way. I know I'm, I'm guilty of I sometimes I'm, I'm slow to change. I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell you that. And, and so if it wasn't for me having partnerships and being able to have conversations with like Trevor Ott's and he's so like, we're going to do something different. I like, no, no. Why would we do something different? Let's just let's just do it works. Let's just do it works. Let's play it safe, man. Let's play it safe. But I, I, I like what Delano said there. He said embrace creativity and when i heard that delana what i heard some folks is that 
like myself, I used to tell myself, Delano, that I'm not a techie, right? I'm not a techie. That's not what I do. I'm not a techie. I stay away from technology. And then one time, I was working with someone, and Trevor Otts refused to help us. Don't worry about it. He and I fight and argue all the time. And he was doing something else he thought was way more important than what I had to do. And so I said to myself, I'm going to try to figure this thing out. And I got in there, and guess what I did? I figured it out. Now, I messed some things up. But don't worry about it. I figured it out. And in that moment, I told myself, you know what? I am a techie. I'm never going to tell myself I'm not something again. I'm going to say, I can learn it. I might not be the master, but I am a techie. Change your story. Change your life. Delano said it a little differently. He said, embrace creativity. And so, Shay, what's your point? As he talks about creative thoughts and how he came up with that, and that's all through his book. And he talked about embracing creativity. What I want you to hear and what I want you to write down right now in your notes, and this is important. Don't miss this. Don't, don't miss this. I want you to listen like you haven't listened all show. I want you to watch like you haven't watched our show, but here's what I want to tell you. It might be outside your comfort zone, but it's within your grasp. Let me, let me say that again. Embrace creativity. It might be outside your comfort zone, but it's within your grasp. It was outside my comfort zone to get into technology. It was outside my comfort zone to say that I even know how to do it. It was outside my comfort zone to try to fix something and not have someone else look at it for afraid something would happen. But guess what? It was within my grasp. If I hadn't reached out and grasped it, if I hadn't said it's possible, if I didn't embrace creativity, then you and I, we wouldn't be talking right now. I, I, I couldn't do this. It, 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 I mean, I, I may have never met you. So someone do me a favor. I'm going to come to the lotto right now. You look right below that video. You look right below that video. And I want you to write, it might be outside your comfort zone, but it is inside of your grasp. Say it's outside your comfort zone, but it's within your grasp, hashtag embrace creativity. Hashtag embrace creativity. Hashtag embrace creativity. We're talking to you this evening, Delano himself and me. This ain't no script. We ain't have no run sheet. He was like, what are we gonna do, Shay? He said, Shay, I just wanna talk about, you know, refuse to live talented and broke. And, and brother, we long we talk about that, I'm good. And I said, okay, and here we are. And I didn't know we was gonna get here. So as you, as you think about it in your life, think about it in your wellness, think about it in your health. Think about it in your business. Think about it in your relationships. You might be saying, Shay, my bank account doesn't reflect how good I am right now. How in the LL Cool J do I even embrace this and try to reach out and get it? Don't worry, Delanto, that's what he does. He works with businesses that got something to work with. But you, 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 I want you to believe it first. And even if you don't believe it, just say Shay Brown holds the belief for me. I'm going to hold the belief for you. It's outside your comfort zone, but it's what? within your grasp. Hashtag embrace creativity. So Delano, talk to us about these creative thoughts that are all throughout the book. I love it. I love it. I can't wait to read more of it. And then talk about this embrace creativity because you are a creative director, my man. You got the gift. Thank God somebody got the gift. And if you're talking right now, we, we can't hear you right now if you're talking. So I don't, I don't know if you turned your mic off. Check, check. Or maybe I turned mine off. Uh, can you guys hear Delano? I can't hear him right now. Uh, let me see. So go over to Skype. Can, sure. can you hear me now? Yes, Check. we can hear you now. And as you're doing that, uh, King Marcus says embrace creativity, by the way. And Ned Smith says embrace creativity. John C. Butler says embrace creativity. Laura L. Johnson said it might be outside my comfort zone, but it's within my grasp. Lakeisha yeah. Hall says it's outside my comfort zone, but it's within my grasp. Don't worry, you can now hear him now. They're always a little bit behind us by about a minute or two, by the way. Mario Reynolds says, embrace creativity. I needed to hear this message right now. This is your moment. This is your time. Delano, talk about that. So let me, let me clarify something here. So, so, so the phrase is embrace your creativity. Okay. Hashtag that. That's a hashtag. Oh, embrace your creativity. Embrace Thanks a lot, your man. Your I want to make sure they put the your in there. Okay. Embrace your um, creativity. If you want to make it personal, you can put hashtag embrace my creativity. Now, I need to establish this because there's three types of creative individuals. All right. Mm -hmm. The only way you can embrace that is to know which type you are. It's just, it just doesn't mean embrace the fact that you may be able to draw or paint. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people don't think that they're creative because we attribute creativity to the arts, but it's not restricted to the arts. It's also critical thinking and mathematics. It's, it's creativity is your ability to dive into what is, but use solutions from what does not exist. So, and everybody does that. If you'd ever lied, 
you've been creative. <laughs> Some people lie and get extremely creative, right? Yeah. You don't want to go to work and, and you already used the dog died, the car, the tire was flat and, and it's the third day and you got to make something up, you get real creative, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so there's three types of creative individuals. I need y'all to write this down. So the first one is the multi-talented creative individual. This is the person who can do three or more things exceptionally well. They're good with sales, they're good with marketing, they're good with construction, they're good with some other art form. They can paint, right? And, but they're not you know, dilettantes, they're not, they're not novice, they're actually good at it, good enough to be paid for it. Now, that's what the multi-talented is. Now, that's a good thing because the word multi has really changed the way that we live. Um, in order to be successful, you have to embrace that multi-word. Matter of fact, if you're in the music industry, you gotta be multi-talented. You have to be multi-layered. You have to be a triple or quadruple threat in order for an agency to even be interested in you. As a speaker, you got to be able to speak logically, speak emotionally. You got to be able to you got to be able to perform. I mean, there's no preacher like a TD Jakes or Noel Jones. I'm sorry. You know, when it comes to preaching, but they themselves will tell you it's about the performance of the knowledge and the wisdom that they have that makes it so enticing, right? The delivery of it. And that's that takes practice and creativity. So the multi-talented individual is also the most confused out of all three because they can do so many things. The biggest question I get from the multi-talented is, what in the world do I do now? What, what, what I, yeah, I can do so many things, what do I do? Come on, tell me what to do because I'm unfocused. I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. I didn't start 50 businesses and none of them made $10, uh, $10 yet. Which, what do I do, what do I do, right? Yeah, I, I call it, the, they, they suffer from a creative disorder I call the skips. They skip from one idea to the next without first making at least $50,000 from the first one. Mm -hmm. So that's the multi-talented. Then you have the creative manager. Now the creative manager doesn't necessarily come up with their own ideas. They are handed ideas or businesses. These are the people who go into multi-level marketing and they just kill it because they need someone to give them something and that's when their creativity come alive. They can manage it, curate it, they can make what that one seed a big orchard you know, in five, 10 years. So that is the creative manager. And then you have the super creative individual. That's the person who can do it all. They are left brain, right brain cognitive individuals. They can start a business, they can run it, they can do the marketing, they can do the planning, they can do the hiring, right? The problem with that is most of them in 10 years suffer from burnout or creative fatigue. Mm. So, the, so the goal is to find who you pair up with properly. Like I said, everything in the beginning was you start on three. Most successful businesses had three individuals in there. You had to see it, the talker, and the doer. The so seer, the, the talker, and the doer. Seer, the talker, and the doer. Okay. That's how all businesses. I think I talked to you guys about that when we was at PNC. No, no, share that. Share share that with the audience. This this is this is good. He shared it at PNC. I have the notes, but go ahead and share with the off with the audience, please. Well, well, I mean, it's it's just simple. Most of the corporations that we know today, the brands that we wear or buy had three individuals at the beginning of the inception, at the genesis of that company. Mm -hmm. You have someone who saw what could be in the future. And they link up with someone who knows how to tell it. And the one who tells it needs to lean on the person who can actually go and get it done. Mm. So when you look at creation, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So, and the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the water. So there was an idea, then someone spoke, and then someone did. God thought, Jesus spoke, Holy Spirit did. Mm -hmm. That's the order of creation. When you're starting your business, don't be, that's why I said don't be selfish. It's a lot to unpack with don't be selfish because you can't do it alone. So, so it's important when you're embracing your creativity, you figure out which one of those categories do you survive in. And as, as soon as you can figure that out, then you start to build your creative team. I talk about that in chapter five.
Mm -hmm. You may be talented and broke because you have too many spectators in your life and not enough team players. Mm -hmm. So know who you are so those who follow can follow based on gifts, talents, and creativity. So let's go to the third mm -hmm. thing Dr. Monroe taught me. Yep. Can we go there now? Yes, we're, we're ready to go there now. Are you sure we can go there now? I'm sure we can go there now. <laughs> yeah, well, type it in the box right down there. So That's for those folks that are out know. there, I'm go ahead and type know. right below. You know, I love it. Delano's in overtime right now. Y'all don't know this, by the way. He's like, uh, Shay, what do you think? I said, I don't know. Let's just see what the people got to say, by the way. And so he's like in overtime. He's getting ready to go into double overtime. He doesn't know that yet. But you look I'm right not, below the video. I'm see, joking. You I'm look right people hanging in there. Y'all got the stuff. Y'all got the I, more people in when we first started. So y'all yeah. got so, the stuff. So I want y'all to look right below the video. Look right below the video right now and put there three type of people you need in the biz business. The seer, the talker, and the doer. The seer, the talker, and the doer. Someone has to see where they're going. They got the vision. Someone has to talk about where they're going and be able to communicate that. And then someone has to be able to get it done. So you need the seer, the talker, and the doer. There are three type of individuals that you need in your business. Someone do me a favor and put that below. Annette said, let's go. She loves it. <laughs> I love it. That's kind of funny. Um, that Monica like, no, put there's too on. many spectators and not enough team players. How true is that? Felicia Jones. What's up, Felicia Jones? She said, y'all here? Yeah, we here. You are at the right place, at the right place, by the way. They haven't forgotten number three, by the way. They have not forgotten number three. And for those for those yeah. folks that are just watching, you're listening, you're out there right now, I do want to let you know that, yes, over here you do see we are talking to the one and only, the author. Oh, I did that a little too big. The author of... Um, Talent refused. Uh, did I get it right? That refused to live. Talented and broke. Refused to live. Talented and broke. He's sharing right there because right in the beginning of that book, he has at the very beginning of that book, he has none other than the, his mentor, Doctor Miles Monroe, who did write the forward of it. By the way, Demi, what's up, Demi? Demi Mo Burns says, "Seer, talker, endure." She's out there. Stephanie Washington. She's hanging in there. Thank you so much. R Rashetta, what's up, Rashetta Porter? She put seer, talker, and doer. Now, I want you to think in your business, do you have all three of these individuals? Or yeah. are you trying to be that person? Like, you're like, wait a minute, Shay, if this is basketball, I'm playing all five positions. If I'm in a cook, I'm doing everything out there right now. No, there's a seer, there's a talker, there's a doer. There's a seer. Yeah, I have a lot of people, Shay, that's, that's burned out with creative fatigue mm -hmm. because they've been doing it themselves. And that's, and that's one of the things that you do help with. Be Superman, with. Superwoman, and be you. Be your creative self. Absolutely. Be your creative self. And that's one of the things that Lana helps with. He helps businesses that are out there really be creative. He helps vi businesses see where they have to go. And he helps businesses really communicate their vision to the people they were called to serve so they know that someone is there to help them do that. You know, one of the things I love to say is that someone right now in your business, someone right now, right now in this moment, they have a goal of finding you. Like there's someone sitting down there right now and the talent you've been given to help them in the world, someone has a goal of finding you. But without a creative director, they might not know that you exist on the planet. Yeah. If a tree falls in the woods and no one is there, does it make a sound? Old not, by, right? not, by, not by my ears. Right. I if you didn't hear it, did it happen? And that, and, I, and, and that might be happening in your business. You're like, Shay, I'm really good. Shay, I'm really talented. But Shay, most folks don't know who I am or the people that know who I am. I got to get to a new group of folks. We'll talk about that. But he's sharing with yeah. you right now some results in your life. And he's sharing with you his wisdom they learned from Dr. Miles Monroe. And I want you to think right now. Your competition is not listening right now to none other than Delano A. Johnson. They're not getting the best ideas that exist on the planet on how to refuse to live talented and broke. Refuse to live talented and broke. Many of you put down seer, talk, or doer, but I, I want you to put down one more time, and I want you to write this down. You, even if you wrote it down before, I want this to be burned into your subconscious mind. And I want us to make a declaration when we do this. I'm coming to Delano. Don't worry. I forgot him. I, he's right there. He's right there. He's getting his water. He's good. But I, I want you... To do this, I want you to tell yourself this seven times a day for the next seven days. Now, I'm going to make a declaration, and I'll do a video. I'm going to share seven times a day for the next seven days, because I'll be reading this book. I'm going to say, I refuse to live talented and broke. 
So I'm going to take that on as a personal mantra. I didn't know I was going to do this, but I'm going to do this. I'm seven times a day for the next seven days, I want you to say, I refuse to be talented and broke. Seven times a day for the next seven days, tell yourself, I refuse to be talented and broke. Now, Shay, why do you want me to say that seven times a day for the next seven days? You've already said it at least 200 times already during this broadcast. Here's why. And I want you to write it down below. I want you to write, I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag, I am enough. I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag, I am enough. Here's the reason why I'm going to do it. Now, it's, not, it's not for everybody. It's not. I get it. But it's for Shay. And if it's for you, you can join on. I refuse to live talented and broke. What's up, Gina Bell? Hashtag, hashtag, I am enough. You go ahead and write that right down, right, right down below. I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag, I'm enough. Here's why I want you to say it seven times a day for the next seven days. Here's why. Maybe you've had this experience. Maybe you have been running down and going down the, um, I saw something flash on my screen, some of that. Maybe you've been running down the road, and as you've been going down the road, let me go right here. Let me, let me turn the Wi-Fi. There we go. Maybe you've been going down the road, and all of a sudden you started singing along with the words to the song on the radio. And, and Gina Bell, Felicia Jones, Destiny, when did, or Mimi, what's up, Mimi? When did you decide that you were going to learn the words to the song on the radio? Like, when did you make that decision? You never did. You never did. But you heard it over and over and over again, and it started playing into your subconscious mind, and that's what's going to happen to you now. Next seven days, seven times a day, you're going to say, I refuse to live talented and broke, hashtag I am enough. And even if you say, Shay, I'm not broke. Life's good for me. I'm not broke. That's okay. But I want you to be talented and have enough money that you can give your wealth away like a Bill Gates. That you can give your wealth away to a foundation. That you can bless someone else. So that's what the mantra is all about. Now, how do you know if we did it or not? I'm going to go in. I'm going to report into the Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe. And I'm going to put, I refuse to live talented and broke, hashtag I am enough. And I'm going I'm to tell you my experience from just doing that. Now, I'm going to be reading the book. And I'm going to suggest you go over to Talented and Broke. Now, now he, didn't, he didn't come over today and say, Shay, can I sell some books? Shay, can you please make sure to get my book? He didn't even do that. He, said, he, didn't, he didn't ask for one penny. But I'm going to tell you why I'm going to do it and what's going to be important to me. You see here, this is the website here. It's Talented and Broke. Let me take this off. Talented and Broke. Right? And it's a website. You can go to Talented and Broke right now. But you've got to put down, I refuse to be, I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag I'm enough. And when you go down there, you can get the book, you can play some videos. You see here he has some really cool stuff up here that you can look at. You can make the pledge today. I didn't know he had a pledge on here. I didn't even know this, by the way. But here it is right here. Look, I, I'm reading it. Your creative transformation begins here. Lakeisha M. Hall said, I refuse to live talented and broke. Mario Reynolds said, I refuse to live talented and broke. Mimi has two daughters, by the way. Uh, Delano, they're 11 years old. She regularly has them watch when they can stay up so they can learn. They're young entrepreneurs right now. Refuse to live talented and broke. Kenesha, I see you said, I refuse to live talented and broke. Destiny, I refuse to live talented and broke. See, it starts now. Delano, I'm going to come over to you. I like your transformation begins here. You can find your creative focus when you read this. You can understand your talents. These things are learning. I know we won't get to the book, but I can't help it, man. I just can't help it. Um, um, where they learn how to overcome your fear. Now, for some of you, it is about monetizing your creativity. So you want to learn the laws of making, growing, and managing money because it's changed. It really has. Felicia says, how do I find my new team? Well, Delano may talk about that, but get the book too. Get, look, everyone go with a talented and broke right now. Now, I'm asking you to get the book. I don't get a penny for this. It's not like, oh, she's asking me to get the book. He's, no, this is for you. But I don't just want you to get the book for yourself. What's up, LaWanda Hill, Louisiana in the house? I don't want you to get the book just for yourself, Stephanie Washington. I want you to get five copies, okay? And I want you to pay the message for it. I got my book in the mail today. Delano sent me my book. I'm, 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 I've got a, we got a sign. I don't want to show off over here, but mine's, mine's, mine's signed, by the way. It says, Touche Brown, thanks for your excellence. The future, and he wrote this in my book. He said, the future belongs to those that create it. That's what he, he put it right in the book. I mean, I, 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 so, so I'm going to tell myself I refuse to live talented and broke. And I'm going to tell myself, you know what? The future belongs to those who what? 
created. And the future, Delano, by definition, is imaginary. The future does not exist. We're always in the present moment. Like, there's a moment, there's a moment, there's a moment. By definition, we are never in the future. We're always in the present moment. So I'm going to yeah. create a compelling future. Go get the book, go get the book, go get the book, go get the book. He has te- testimonies on here. He has the therapy on it. He got creative thoughts. I mean, the website, the, go to the website. Matter of fact, everyone share this right now. Hit the share button and say, get the book. Talented and broke. Dot com. Get the book, talentedandbroke.com. All right, with that being said, what's up? Jacqueline Fulton is in the house. I refuse to be talented and broke. Stephanie Washington said, challenge accepted. Yeah, this is your time. This awesome. is your moment. That's awesome. This is your year. I got carried away. I lost it, but I can't help it. You got to go get the book. All right, over, over to you. I know you got number three. I get it. I'm sorry. I lost my mind. I'm back with y'all. Let me go back over to my super duper uh, incredible special guest, none other than the Delano A. Johnson, and he's talking about I refuse, I mean, refuse to live talented and broke. Over to you, Delano, so you can give us that number three. They've been waiting for that number three. Like, where's the number three they, coming? Yeah, they, <laughs> they've been waiting for number three. Well, <laughs> for Miles Monroe. Yeah, it, 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 before we go into that, um, I, I just want to unpack that statement the future belongs to those that created. Um, the first time I had a check come in, from writing a song, mm-hmm. we had a song, and we got our performance rights and the and the royalties from that from that song, and it wasn't a big check, but our manager sent us the check, and I'm a I'm a you know I'm 19 years old, I'm in the Bahamas, and I get a check from a big corporation mm-hmm. that's paying me royalties <laughs> for for work that I did one time. Shay, can I tell you, I got it. A bell rang off in my head and I say, that's the way to go. Intellectual property is more lucrative than real property. Mm. I'm giving you a nugget here. Say that Say that one more time. And Intellectual- that said, what did I miss? My battery died. Well, I'm glad you got your battery charged back up. I knew it was going to be this long. Keep your phone charged. You don't want to miss a minute. All right, go ahead, Delano. When you buy a house, there's a clause in that contract that says that the government, if they so deem, can take your property from you. Mm-hmm. With intellectual property, once you own that piece of paper, let's say you own the patent rights, you own the design rights, you own this. And this has been something that African Americans did not have the privilege to fight for. We've created and invented so many things. Had we owned the patent for these things, we would have had generational wealth and experienced that in a lot of our families. Mm. So intellectual property is where the new wealth is for our people. It is, it is converting our ideas into products and services that could be duplicated and sold long after we die. Say that one more now time. Say that one more time. And I see some people writing intellectual property is more lucrative than real property. Go ahead, go ahead and go into that last statement one more time that you just said, please. So, so I would say it like this. You have a matter of fact, you gotta you you have to play that back because that was on that was just off the top of my head. <laughs> that was you, like you're doing, you, you are doing well. You're doing well. The you point you made was intellectual property is more oh. lucrative than real property. And had we yeah. received and in turn, what we know, and we had the intellectual property, we would have left families, we would have legacy of we generational more, wealth right now. Further on than we are right now. And it's because it's because in that time, in that season, we didn't have the rights and the knowledge to actually go and patent things. But there are a lot of people that slip through the through the cracks. I remember just actually speaking to a guy that knows that knows Lonnie Johnson, who's the, he's the guy, the inventor that created the super soaker. And he had to fight for his $100 million. Uh, Nerf took his, his idea and turned it into a toy. And he sued them and won $100 million. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so too many of us sleep or, I mean, most of us have seen some product come across TV selling for $19.95, but wait, there's more. We've seen products that was ours 
You say to yourself, I had that. I still have the plans in the basement. Somebody did it before you. Intellectual property. You To own more land, you got to buy more property and expand out, which means more people have to manage it. And whatever you cannot, if you cannot police what you own, you don't own it. So intellectual property is like cloud data storage. Mm, I like that. There's no limit to your intellectual capacity of what you could own. So I go into a thing I teach, in particularly the super creative people, how to organize their thoughts so that they can own. I, I own so many domains. I think it's about, I'm, I'm probably at 800 domains. And you say, well, Delano, why, why do I do that? Talented and broke. So here's what I did. I was given an idea, I turned my pain into profits, and I created a product. But I know that this is not a book. This is not a book, this is a product. And so that product has to have follow-up products. See, my goal is to get you to, from talented and broke to talented and successful. And from talented and successful to talented and rich. Mm-hmm. And when you achieve talented and rich, now it's time for talented and wealthy. Mm-hmm. So that's when you're at the place now where you're transferring your intellectual property to the next generation. My goal, and I hope it's yours too, is to invest in my great grandson's first business idea. Wow. To leave funds, to say, your granddaddy planned in his absence. That's powerful. In his absence, he planned to invest in your first business idea. When his son says to him, that's a great idea, son. Here's the money your great grandfather left just for you. These are the types of experience we're, we're, we're void of. We don't have this type of a history where we're, we have a sense of, of legacy and longevity. You know, so, so let me quickly just move on. <laughs> and give you the third one. I'm surprised no one put it in, in there. <laughs> Say, what's the third one? You know, what did you learn from Dr. Right, 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 right now, right now they're putting, if you can't, if you cannot police what you own, you don't, you don't own, own it, it, which is so true. See, they, 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 they put their own notes in there, which is, which is really interesting, right, by the way, and I love what they put in there. Our circumstances may not look like what my mind sees that will happen in a few months. I love what they're putting. Thank you so much. Welcome, Katina. Hey, thanks a lot, Ashley, for joining on, by the way. We appreciate it. Lakeisha Hall says, you are giving us gems, golden nuggets. Thank you so much. Mimi says, this makes so much sense. Preach. Mimi said, preach, preacher. (laughs) I didn't didn't mention he's a preacher, by the way. I didn't even say that, by the way. They picked that up their own self. (laughs) I know what you meant, Mimi. I got you. But listen, let's go to the let's let's go to the third thing. Yes, that I please do. <laughs> from my dearest father in the ministry, father. Um, the most important thing, and I saved it for the last. Mm-hmm. When we toured with Dr. Munro, he took us with him, and a lot of times we opened for him. We actually sang rap and reggae before this minister came and and bring the gospel. And in a lot of times he knew the songs, he would perform it with us. There's a picture with him in the last performance we did the Sunday before he passed. Mm -hmm. And we hadn't been on stage together for a very long time, at least about 15 years. And that that day we were on stage performing one of his favorite songs. But one of the most important things I learned from Dr. Miles Monroe is be and fight to stay humble. In all of his success, this man would be tired, come off of his jet, come into a place and treat everybody like he just met them for the first time, like you were the first people I'm meeting today. If that is eight o'clock in the morning, you're the first people. No, it's 11 o'clock and he's done preaching for three hours and he comes down from that pulpit, goes in the back, get a drink of water, eat something. And goes out to the front of his table to shake the hands of everybody that can. Many times we have to whisk him away. But he always stayed humble and true 
to servanthood. He is someone who preached that leadership is servanthood. A leader is a servant. First and foremost, we are here to serve you. Matter of fact, the better you become at serving, the more money you make and the more you're required to lead. The better you are at serving. When you think about it, who are you serving in your business? Your customers. Mm -hmm. You're serving your customers. So leadership is all about serving. And in your success, it is imperative for you to remain and to be humble. I like what Kendrick Lamar said, be humble, sit down, be humble. It's not about you, be humble. I love that, be and fight to stay humble. Angela Hodge says, be and fight to stay humble. Tabitha said, be and fight to stay hum humble. Daniel Smith, who's joined on said, be and fight to stay humble. Angela Hobbs says, leadership is servanthood. How true is that? Lakeisha Hall said, I'm so sleepy, but I can't go to sleep. I just can't. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's not about that. We appreciate it. Some of you going to, some of you want the replay. Some of you want to get the notes. Here's how you get the notes and everything. We're coming down the home stretch. We're done, but here's how you get the notes. I want you to text the word revenue. If you want to get the notes, you want to get the business toolbox. I'm going to tell you how to get the book. So we're not going anywhere. I'm, I'm going to have to have a part two, obviously, as you can tell. Um, but text the word revenue. Text the word revenue. Text the word revenue right now to 202-999-3515. You see it on the bottom of the screen. Get your mobile device out right now. Vanessa Klinger said, hashtag stay humble. That is so true. Text the word revenue. Text the word revenue to 202 202- 9993515. Once you text the word revenue to 202-9935 or 202-9993515, you'll get the notes and you'll get the business toolbox and the bonus gift that I promise. There's a bonus gift that I packaged to put away just for you. Even if you texted before, text in again right now. And then I love is he said, sit down and be humble. I just saw you know. Jacqueline Fulton says, I am a servant leader. I like that. If you're a servant leader, and, and he's going to talk about the book. I'm going to have, have, have to have him back, obviously. But he's going to talk about the book in just a moment. I'm going to give you one idea. Out of here. He's giving me so many ideas. Gee whiz. Um, you got to get the book. Get the book, talentedandbroke.com. But I want you to write below the video, I am a servant leader. I am a servant leader. I am a servant leader. The person that outgives the competition, out earns their competition. Lakeisha Hall said, this was God ordained for me. To come across this video this is a show we are live right now and i was going to bed but i can't because that white is out there again if you want the notes you go ahead and text 202-999-3515 she put i am a servant what's up what's up uh gazi gazi's out of phoenix arizona he's back on by the way so y'all still here um um get the notes <laughs> in the business toolbox i'm gonna share something with you that was shared with me by none other than the man himself on fake friends. And then I'm going to get him to give a couple ideas out of the book. And I got to bring them back. Um, Monique said, I am a server. Vanessa said, I am a server. Cheryl Diane said, I am a server. These are folks who are just sharing what's from their heart right now. Kalisa, right. thanks for staying out there. We appreciate it, by the way. You are amazing. Angela Hobbs, you're just super incredible. Ebony Young, she said, I joined on earlier. She's back again. What's up, Ebony Young? Annette Smith, thank you so much. Destiny Robbins, you've been following this guy, by the way. She's been stalking you, but he's here. You got him right now, and he's here watching. Um, you're going to love Ebony, by the way. She puts on events. She does spoken word. She's, a, she's an author, by the way. Now, one of the things that he hadn't talked about tonight, I'm going to get him back on. He does work with businesses, and he helps them be, get their vision out. He helps them get going. This is what he does. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share for those folks as you're listening right now. Gina Bell, I'm going to go ahead and share something that he shared with me that is just so important on fake friends. Let me share that with you. Get that for you right this second one. May the blessings of today create victories for tomorrow. And should tomorrow never come, may the things we do today inspire creativity in someone else's life beyond ours. Listen, Delano A. Johnson here, author of the book, Refuse to Live, Talented and Broke. I got a creative thought for you today. Here's the thought. Never let people write your future using failures of your past. Why? Because they will always put a period after your failures. 
So Delano, what do you mean by that? Here's what I mean. People come disguised as co-creators, co-partners, co-writers in your life, and they are co-conspirators with the enemy. Why? Because they don't truly believe in you. They don't want you to succeed. They will always put a period after you fail. They will always discount your potential. They will always see your failures as final. And I'm telling you right now, those people, they don't use constructive criticism to build you up. They use the history of their past to try to control you. I'm telling you, a friend, a good friend, a true friend is someone who uses your past to help you construct a system to minimize your mistakes. That's who a true friend is. I'm tired, and you know, Melo, I don't usually get this all round up, but I was on a conversation just a few minutes ago, and I'm telling you today, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take control. Take control from the people who come into your life disguised and clothed as companions for the composition of what God is creating in your life. I'm telling you, they are nothing but cat burglars. The number seventh reason why you could be talented and broke is because you allow high levels of toxicity in your relationships, the people who you know. And that toxicity poisons your creativity. You see, your creativity is the only thing that stands between who you were yesterday and who you know you can become in your future, tomorrow. Today I need you to make a decision to get rid of the toxicity in your life. I need you to take back the power of your creativity from those counterfeit co-authors in your life that's trying to curtail the promise of your future. Listen, delete them from your Instagram, delete them from your Facebook, delete them from all your social media, and delete them from your contacts. Why? Because the longer you allow them to hang around in your life, the more talented, broke, and eventually emotionally broken you will be. Do that today. And don't delay. And as always, I'm Delano A. Johnson. Embrace your creativity. I'm out. Embrace your creativity. Embrace your creativity. I loved how you talked about that. And that, that's a great segue. What's up, Tammy Lawrence? And two, that for many of you listening right now, one of the core values, and I want you to hear that from Delano himself, one of the core values that we have here at the Happy Entrepreneurs Network is that today is your January 1st. Today is your January 1st. Your love. past does not equal your future. Let me say that again. Your past does not equal your future. Today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. In fact, as I'm saying that right now, I, I want to share with you, and I want you right now to look right below the video, look right below the video, and just put, today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. I have new opportunities. I have new opportunities. Today is my January 1st. And you see, you see every day as a new opportunity. You can either build on yesterday's failures, you, or you can put those behind you, and you can start again. So yes, today is my January 1st. Remember how excited you were back on December 31st? This was going to be a new year, new clients, new customers, new goals. You were going to go to the gym. You are going to build your relationship. You are going to work with others. But here's what I want you to know. No matter where you are, when your feet hit that ground tomorrow, you can tell yourself that today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. I want you to look right below the video, look right below the video, and put that affirmation that today is my what? January 1st. Today is my what? January 1st. Today is my what? January 1st. You know, when you hear those words, Delanto, when you hear those words that today is my January 1st, and you get that feeling like, you know what? Happy New Year, everybody. Today indeed is my January 1st. When you hear that, Delanto, what goes through your mind? What should they be thinking? What should they be feeling? You talked about that just a moment ago, but I want you to put your, your remix version on that, having watched the video yourself there, and then hearing the core value, every business, every individual, you've got to have your mission, your goals, and your objectives, but there's some core values that you live by, and one of mine is redemption. One of mine is that today is your January 1st, and you can start from wherever you are, and one of the things my father used to teach me is that you can, in poker, you can win with any hand. 
You can mm. recreate who you are right now. There's plenty of time if you start now. I saw you, Lori L.J. Johnson said, today is my January 1st. Angie Hyde says, today is my January 1st. For all of us, today is our January 1st. Delonta, when you hear that, what goes through your mind? What are you feeling right now? I know we're in triple overtime. It's like watching one of the all-star games on TV. It's like, boo, another shot, another three-pointer. <laughs> but today is their January 1st, and they don't have to. They, they can refuse to live talented and broke. You've laid the blueprint. So what I want you to know on here is that you don't have to be excited. That's not the point. I don't want you to be motivated and encouraged and be shouting all over. That's not what we're trying to do. What I want you to do is tell yourself the shift in the mindset that today is my January 1st. Shay, yeah. is there a blueprint? Yeah, yeah. You, you can contact Delano. There's ways he can help you in his organization, but he's laid out a blueprint right here for you. And inside it, what I like about it is that he's already, you can't see that far anyway, but he's already put together worksheets and workbooks. I just opened it up. And it says, you abuse time and misunderstand your creative life cycles. I don't know what that means, but what I do know is he's already put the pictures right there for me. Delano, when you hear today is my January 1st, what comes to your mind? Just say that one time. Today is my January 1st. Can you say that one time, Delano? Today is my January 1st. Yeah, when you hear that, what kind and of when I goes hear to your that mind? and say that, I'm a little nervous, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Because January 1st meant that I had 365 days to do something significant with the air that I breathe. Mm. So that January 1st is a reminder that it is God's gift again to re-up on the opportunity to make a splash or a bigger splash, to finish first and not second to accomplish what he gave you in the first place. So that's your control alt delete if you have a PC. That's your command shift delete if you have a Mac. That's your opportunity to reboot, restart, and like we say in reggae music, rewind and come again selector. So, <laughs> so that is the opportunity for you to do that. But the most important thing with a January 1st is not resolutions, but resolve the pain. We talked about it earlier. Resolve it, learn from it, and take that value and invest it into your future. Wow. That's, That's what you do with a January 1st. Be scared because it's God giving you an opportunity now. He's giving you another chance. This is another chance. This is another chance. But he's giving you another chance to do what? So look at what your failures were, learn from them, and invest that learning into the goal of your future. That's what you need to do with every single January 1st you have. I love that. Amen. Today is your January 1st. You know, Delonto, um, take take a minute, because I'm going to have you back. Will you come back for part two? I got to have you part two, obviously. Hey, I, I, this, I'm here, man. I'm we, here. We, we kind of got carried away with, with the people today, and that's, that's very important, because without you, the audience, um, there is no show. Without all of you who are sharing this and yep. paying this message forward, we appreciate every comment that you make, we appreciate. Every time you hit the heart button, we appreciate it. Um, every time you take a step and you let your, your own community know, we appreciate it. You know, one of the things I love about Delano is that everything he's teaching you is saying it's not about me. It's about what I've learned and what I'm passing on to you. Delano, this book is full with so much wisdom in it. Um, I've only looked at the first couple of pages um, and I've gone through it because I said, well, you know, do I talk about this book? Do I not? I got the book yesterday. You know, one thing I like about Delano is he said, look, I need your address. Now, people tell me all the time, need your address. I'm going to send you a book. And some people send it. Some people don't. Honestly, I don't know if he's going to send it or not. I believe he would. The guy said he would. But Certainly, I didn't think I would get it today because sometimes when they send it, they send it like the slowest way possible. I think they go to the post office and say, send this, and it takes like five weeks to get here. Yeah, like I only want, I only want to pay 15 cents. Right. So how long is it going to take to get there? Right, right. <laughs> They're like, Shay, I sent it a while ago. You should get it soon. But I got yep. it today, and I opened it up, and just the feeling of the book and the, and the depth of it, I said, here's a guy who put his heart 
and soul into the book. So this is not just the, oh, support the author and go get a book. No, it's get it and share it. Delano, talk about it. What's up, Greta Thomas? It's, uh, Greta Thomas is in the house. She's down in Atlanta, by the way. What are you doing here? But anyway, uh, we Greta, love you, Greta. What's up? Yeah, Greta's amazing. She was, her and her husband were at Power Network Conference as well, by the way. She's oh, an amazing great. realtor out of um, Atlanta and does some uh-huh. amazing things, by the way. Just, uh, they, they have their own um, uh, shared office space down there. something else that she's involved in. Uh, their Good. own uh, training facility. So Greta, make sure you connect with Delano because he definitely be someone that you want to come in and talk and speak to the group. I know Trevor was just there. It was just totally amazing. So Greta, thanks for joining. Thanks for sharing it out. All right, Delanto, um, Delano, you said you would come back, but I want you to talk a little bit about the golden nuggets they get in the book. Some of the yeah. golden nuggets they get in the book. Take one or two ideas. You can't get into too much, man. It's too deep. Yeah, too deep. No, we can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. But I, but I want to leave you with this. This is a, this is a, this is a pressure point with a lot of the coaching that I'm doing right now. Um, chapter seven. So the book was. Let me just give you the history. So I went through that whole loss, um, and I read over 300 books. I read everything from my, my, uh, John Maxwell's uh, leadership books to uh, Jack Welch's leadership books to. I mean, I read Adam Smith, uh, um, I mean, everybody. And, and I wanted to figure out, because I know there was an answer, how is it that talented and gifted people end up so miserably broke? How does that happen? Mm-hmm. So I, I purposed in my heart that I would write this, this document and, and leave it for my sons, because I didn't want them... To, to actually experience this. And what happened, Shay, is that when I was 17, I saw my father went through the same exact thing that I went through. My father was the food and beverage manager at two of the largest hotels on the island when I was a kid. Uh, he had money, he had, uh, he had successful restaurants, and um, he used to send my older brothers and sisters from Freeport to Miami just to shop and bring them back. He had limos on the road. Um, and, and so he had a lot of money, but by the time as I hit 17, my dad was sleeping in a one bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. So I see him go from having three houses to just having a one bedroom apartment. And here it is. I said to myself at 17, I would never be like my father, one of the most talented people I know, but yet he was broke. And I said that at 17, but here, here I am now at 33, sorry, 39. I made my first million when I was 33 by 39. I lost it all. And my 39, I'm realizing, wait a minute, this seems like a, like a rerun. Like I've seen this before. Where have I seen this before? Oh, wait a minute, my dad. And that's when I read a paper on uh, a branch of science called epigenetics, which supposes that we are predisposed to make the same decisions our parents made when placed in the same scenarios. I know we've all seen or heard our parents do something and you say to yourself, oh my God, I sound just like my mom. I sound just like my dad, right? And 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 this is the same thing you hate about that parent. <laughs> you find yourself doing. And so I wanted to, with understanding this, I realized that my sons, what fate would they have? And I wanted to be a partner with them. I wanted to be a voice from the past that was that would always help steer them. I want everybody to write this down. There's four things that, uh, that a man is supposed to do that, that determine his manhood. One, he has to have an idea to live by. I'm sorry, an idea to believe in, number one. An idea to believe in, number two, he has to have a purpose to live by. Number three, he has to leave instructions to adhere to. And number four, he has to leave resources to do it all. Those are the four things you have to do. So me, I was leaving instructions for my son. This is what you do. Don't go into business with anybody, no partnership, unless you own 70% of it because we're too nice of a people. My father was in partnerships and he just, in confrontation, he would walk away because he, oh, because he knew he was that good to start a new business. So he would walk away instead of fighting or, or, or at least staying part owner of that business so that there was residuals that he could receive down the line. So... So I, I'm, I'm saying that because I wanted to leave this for my kids. Now, one of the problematic areas for a lot of people that I've been coaching, particularly super creative people, comes out of chapter seven. 
So the book is 10 chapters. I came away from reading all those books with about 107 principles. But of course, I couldn't write all of those in one book. And so I, I put it, I, I condensed it to 10 chapters, which actually there's 11. We have a chapter zero. And so those 10 chapters are basically the things that make you or keep you in a perpetual state of talented and broke. Things that you are doing or not doing. So chapter seven is you could be talented and broke because your creativity is poisoned by toxic relationships. You're in a relationship where it is difficult to maneuver because you're always looking over your back and what the person thinks about you. Are they approving of you? Are they jealous of you? Are they supporting you? You're in this relationship. Sometimes it's a love relationship, sometimes it's siblings, sometimes it's parents. But the relationship is toxic and you realize that you can't do nothing under that roof. Les Brown said something to me that was the most powerful statement I heard about potential. He says, Delano, I want, I want you to remember this. He said, environment is more powerful than willpower. Environment is more powerful than willpower. And then I realized what Jesus did when he went back after being uh, uh, baptized and he went back into Galilee. And, and the scripture says that he was not able to do much work there because of the unbelief of the people. The environment was not conducive for him to help them. Amazingly, the king of kings couldn't help them because of their unbelief. So I want to take, I want everybody to take away this here. There are two positions in a relationship. You can either be the seeker or you can be the settler. A lot of times we get into relationships without unpacking who that person really is with the hopes that we could change them. Remember, the, this, this person who you vow to be for the rest of your life is a co-author. They are a business partner and a companion. A spouse is a business partner and a companion. <clears throat> so I want you to really in this week, take a look at the relationships around you. Some of them you can't do nothing about it. If you're married already, you're stuck. You gotta make the best out of it. <laughs> but there's ways and information that can help you to actually proceed as opposed to being stuck in a rut, not being able to create. Some of you right now, you cannot create to your full potential because of the environment you're in. Every time you start to shine, that person gets jealous, that person pulls back, there is a reason not to support you, you're doing too much, why are you trying to do that? You, you, you know, why, why, why we have to do this now? So I want you to think about, about those relationships deeply in this week. And for some of you who are going to go and get the book, I give a 15 minute free consultation for every purchase. Um, that's every book that's purchased right off the bat. So I want you to think about that, read that chapter. And I want us to have some conversations about how I can help you move from that stuck place to the place where you're talented and successful. From talented and broke to talented and success, successful. From talented and broke to talented and successful. And with that, as always, embrace your creativity. I'm Delano A. Johnson. I'm out. All right, Delano. Thanks a lot. <laughs> you dropped the mic on it. He's out. Thank you, Delano. You've been amazing. We appreciate your time. Look, here's how we show Delano a, a thank you. Here's how we give a digital applause to the man who thought it'd be, I thought it'd be a few minutes, but he's here. Here's how we give a digital applause. You go over and look right below the video, and you put, thank you, Delano, or Delano, we appreciate you, or Delano, you did great, or Delano, this is worth my time. So how do you do that? Sometimes we don't get a chance to show our appreciation. Maybe you shared it, we appreciate that, but you look below the video and put amazing. You look below the video and say, we appreciate you. So people like Lori Johnson is already putting clap, clap, clap. Uh, Kalinsa is putting amazing. Denise put, excellent tonight, thank you so much. Monique put, Thank you so much. 
Destiny put, you are low, Shay. Okay, hopefully you can hear me now. Um, I said go right now. Look right below the video. We are giving none other than Delano a digital applause. And how we're giving him a digital applause is... Oh, I see. There we are. You couldn't hear me. You couldn't hear me. Now you can hear me. Now you can hear me. Sorry about that. I had... My I hit the button. Sorry. Yank. I'm not perfect either. When I was asking everyone to do this, doing it already, they saw you like this and say, that man dropped the mic. Look below the <laughs> video. Give Delano a digital applause. The way you give him a digital applause is you can say, thank you, Delano. We appreciate you, Delano. You are amazing, Delano. This has been a good use of my time, Delano. And as the Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe, we like to do that. We like to let folks know that when they show up and they give of their energy, they give of their time, they take away from their family, they take away from what they love to do, we love to say that you are amazing. So Lori said, thank you so much. Tammy thank says, you, you are, thank you so much. Mimi says, thank you, Mr. Delano Johnson. Jacqueline Fulton says, amazing. Uh, Tammy can hear me now. Greta says, amazing. Um, uh, Cheryl Thanks. Diane says, I'm so full tonight. Vanessa says, you're muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Boundless says, clap, clap, clap. Thank you so much. And thank you all for telling me when you can't hear me because we wouldn't know. Stephanie Washington says, awesome. Five books, 75 minutes. Love it. Uh, Cheryl Diane says, uh, Delano, you are the bomb.com, by the way. Jack Fulton said, we fire, appreciate fire. you. Uh, Rashetta <laughs> says, great show, Delano. And Shay, thanks so much. Uh, Mimi says, clap, clap, clap. Look, Delano, thank you so much, man. You're amazing. We'll have you back. With that being said, if you want the notes, everyone, you can text the word revenue. Text the word revenue to 202-999-3515. Again, 202-999-3515. Text the word revenue. Get the notes, the toolbox, and the special gift. And Delano's already promised I'll get him back on here. And he'll talk about business next time. Today he talked about results in your life because you need to get yourself right before you get your business right, right? So you take care of yourself first, then you take care of everyone else. So he will come back. We'll do that. Daniel Smith said, thank you for the words of wisdom. He appreciated it. Kalisa said, it was such a blessing. Appreciate it. Someone else said, powerful information. Look, you rocked out. With that being said, I want you, every one of you to know Seven times a day for the next seven days. What are you going to say? I refuse to live talented and broke. I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag I am enough. Crystal said yes, yes, yes. Tabitha said buy the book. That's right. Buy the book. www.talentedandbroke.com. Again, www.talentedandbroke.com. Don't buy one book. Don't buy two books. Buy five books. If you want 10 or more for your church, you want 10 or more for your organization, you want to bring Delano in, go ahead and reach out directly to Delano. He is a speaker. He is a trainer. He also works with companies because he's a creative director. The guy is a master at what he does. I'm going to tell you, every now and then we have one of these shows where I'm just like, whoa, like this is one of those ones that if I had the energy, I'd be here. But I've got to get up in like three hours because i got to get on a 640 flight. I don't even worry about the time. It's an early flight that I got to get up, but it doesn't really matter. We appreciate you. So with that being said, look right below the video. We're going to close out and just put, I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag I'm enough. I'm going to say that seven times a day for the next seven days. I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag I'm enough. Because you can go from talented and broke to talented and successful, then talented and rich, and then talented and leaving a legacy. I think that's how he laid it out. Crystal Cunningham said this was powerful that's right but the pencils broke that's all she wrote with that being said by the way my name by the way is shay brown the happy entrepreneur make it a great day everyone and i promise you from the bottom of my heart we'll make some good things how we connect again next time delano thanks a lot you are amazing i refuse to live talented and broke we'll see y'all next time let me go ahead and uh do 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 we're gonna get out of here right now <laughs> Please go ahead and give a big standing check ovation check, 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 for check. the one and the only Shay Brown. And I'm here right now in this moment with none other than the one and only Dr. Willie Jolly. What's up, my friend? It's a privilege and a pleasure and a treat and a treasure to be in your presence. All right, Delator, we're going to get started. You ready, Delator? I'm ready, friend. I'm you ready, Dr. Kinnett? Ready, you ready. No, none other than Andy Harikas and... And we have someone like a Dr. Sonia, who's a bad sister. All right, now, go ahead with your bad self. None other than the Kim Warren Martin.
promise I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, check. Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we, 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 no matter what. Man. Got money on my mind, Man. I can never Man. get enough. And every time I step Man. up in the building, yeah. everybody yes. hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Thank you, thank you, Captain.